welcome to Out of the Box Radio with me, your host, Christine Blasdale. Out of the Box Radio is a weekly podcast of audible ear candy dedicated to bringing a fresh perspective on this thing that we call life. And each and every week, we're going to be diving into the topics that matter most with lively conversations on issues such as health, wellness, and transformational healing, all with the goal of creating a better world and becoming a happier human being. I will be your tour guide for this epic adventure, and each and every week we're going to be embarking on a journey with the ultimate goal being transformation to our highest potential. And now, let's get out of the box. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Out of the Box Radio. I am your host, Christine Blasdale, and I'm really jazzed that you joined us today because today I have a very special guest, someone I've I've actually, I've never interviewed you, Kelly, but I've wanted to for a very long time. Um, My guest this hour is Kelly Carlin, and in addition, my goodness, she's done so much stuff, Uh, in addition to creating a wonderful memoir, A Carlin Home Companion, Growing Up with George, Kelly actually not only documented, of course, what it was like growing up being the daughter of one of the most recognizable comedians on the planet, but also what that experience was for her and how she came into her own, especially after his his passing. But Kelly is also involved in a lot of projects. She has her own podcast, Waking from the American Dream. She performs a solo show about her life and family. And she has also got a uh, program on Sirius XM called The Kelly Carlin Show. And there's so much more. In addition to all of that, she is... Uh, embarking in the webinar world and is doing a brand new webinar series called Unplug with Kelly Carlin. And that starts April 1st. And to talk about all of that and so much more, so much beautiful, naughty things that we can talk about is Kelly Carlin. Welcome to Out of the Box Radio, Kelly. Thank you for having me. I know. I can't believe we've never officially done this before. I know. (laughs) Well, this is good. (laughs) But this, you know what? This is good because this is our, this is ours. This is our format. Yes. We don't have to pitch a product. We don't have to we don't gotta do anything. Like we get to actually <laughs> we get to actually just talk and, and, and chat. And that's kind of one of the things, you know, we're gonna talk about the book. We're gonna talk about all the stuff that you've done, but I was really excited to hear that you're doing this webinar, Unplug with Kelly Carlin, because that what I just described about, you know, just being ourselves and um, and and we talked just a little bit earlier before the interview about, you know, women especially really coming into and moving this thing forward. There's legions and legions of healers. And when I say healers, I don't just mean like hands on healers or things like that. But women are really taking a critical uh, role in in changing the world and unplug with Kelly Carlin. I was just reading some of the I was just reading some of the reviews from people who have taken this uh, this webinar and. It's amazing, Kelly, what you're doing right now. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, you know, it, it's the kind of thing where I, last year, it was the spring, it was about a year ago, and I was feeling extremely overwhelmed by the um, political reality <laughs> in America <laughs> and also the um, what felt like this, and it still is an insane news cycle. Mm. And, um, and the year before I had taken three months off of social media after being on social media. Yes. Three months. Yes. In the summer of 2016, beautiful. I unplugged it all. The only thing I did was, is I opened an Instagram account so that I could take pictures and share them because one of my first art forms was photography. Mm -hmm. And I only followed other photographers on there. But I removed all of my social media apps from all the electronic devices. And I I unplugged on a deep, deep, on a personal level, on a neurological level, on a social cultural level. And I just, I felt so freed by it and, and barely, barely willingly came back to it in the fall, but only because it was like, I'm, I'm still want to participate in the conversation that's going on in the world. But um, it taught me so much about 
the power of taking control over my attention. Like Mm, I believe mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. what we focus on and what we put our attention on is our biggest resource. Yes. And it, it really showed me like how much more powerful I felt in my life because I was deciding where to put my attention instead of being like a little, uh, rat hitting a little (laughs) bar to get another hit of cocaine. (laughs) It's so true. It's so true. I, you know, the other, uh, like about a week ago, I had like kind of a little, not a mental breakdown because I don't have those, but I had like a little like, like I just was like, fuck everything. And I took a two day break from Facebook and Instagram. I I literally deactivated both my accounts for two days. And I got to tell you, I felt so freaking free. Yes. I felt free. And that was two days. Yeah. And going back was like, oh, okay. I, you know, I went yeah, back I in and it was the like, same well, thing. Do it. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. So that kind of like clued me into like, oh, and then of course, you know, part of it, what was, what was great about it when I took the three months off was we were in the middle of the presidential campaign too. So it was like, I was like freed of that. Like if I read a newspaper, yeah. that was fine. Yeah. So, and then the springtime came and, you know, we had this new president and, um, what, what, what started it was on the inauguration day, instead of, um, watching the whole inauguration, I offered counter programming on Facebook. I did a 90 minute meditation slash kind of Buddhist, thing, you know, like I did like a little lecture, a little Dharma talk. And, and I thought, wow, I really like doing that. And so I decided last summer to offer summer, like, Hey, come unplug with me. And and you, you you weren't required to unplug from anything, but I let people know, like, please do that. If that's what you want to get out of this, come do that with me. And, um, and it's been great. I did a so I've been doing it with chunks of seasons. So I did a summer season and then I did a fall and I just ended the winter season. I'm about to start the spring season up. And that's been really fun too because I focus on kind of the nature of each season and the archetypes and the metaphors that are associated with the season and use them to go deep with people and kind of um, contextualize the work we're going to do each week. And and I offer people 90 minutes. I say to people, look, even if you don't take care of yourself or unplug for the rest of the week, like I don't know what your personal habits are, whatever your goals are, but for 90 minutes on a Sunday, um, you get to do that. <laughs> and then they'll also, if people participate in the webinar, they can, wa- I mean, they can watch live, of course, yeah, they, the, the, they, the 90 minutes, but then it's also, they can still um, sign up and, and the, um, the webinars are available what like up to a day before, uh, after. Yeah. A day, yeah. And like within 12 hours, I upload the video and I upload an Great. audio version. So people, if they don't want to watch the whole video, they can just put it in their phone and just listen to it like a podcast. So too, on, if, if on that particular Sunday, if, if Johnny's birthday party is right. is right in there, right, they can watch it at another time too. Yep. Yep. And usually I get about half the people to come live and usually half the people never show up and I, I don't know what they're doing and I don't know how they're participating. And then I'll get an email from people like, Hey, I'm a total introvert. I don't do the whole group thing, but I've been listening every week and thank you so much. And I'm like, oh, okay, good. People are doing it. All right. All right. Good to know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love how you describe this. This was the, this is just so uh, brilliant Um, about the, about this course. And it is a course unplug with Kelly Carlin. It's you describe it as going to church without the funny hats, magical thinking or dogma with a few fucks thrown in. I love that. (laughs) I just love that because it's real. It's it's real. You know, every now and then a good you know, you just sometimes you just need to say that word. Well, you, and, and, and oh, your, your dad knew Christina, the power of that word. For, I lost you there for about 15 seconds. Oh, Sorry. I, I said um, I said sometimes you just need to use that word 
And um, and if anybody on this planet, especially <laughs> your father, actually uh, knew the power of well, not the power of the word, but that that they're words. Yeah, they describe the power, things certainly, and they describe yeah, how you're yeah. feeling. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah, you know, it's I. Yeah, I kind of landed in a place a couple of years ago where I really got like, um, like you know. I'm a separate person and I do my own thing and I have my own thoughts and views in the world. And of course we're all influenced by our parents and stuff like that. And, and my dad's thinking was brilliant on many levels, but I am who I am, but I will always be a Carlin. I will always use the word fuck and, um, <laughs> and, and, and kind of my secret life mission is I want to be the Oprah that says fuck, you know, <laughs> like that's kind of my mission statement. The last year. And a half. That's your, that's on the senior book, right? Where it's like, this says, what do you want? to do when you grow up when you want yes. to be. <laughs> exactly exactly I, I want to be the f-bomb dropping <laughs> oprah <laughs> yeah totally yeah and and the thing is too is like you know i hang out with a lot of secular humanists and atheists and you know i've been part of that world the last god i don't know five or six years d- due to the association with my father and they invited me into their community and and I kind of had to find my own way in there. And, um, you know, because I'm a practicing Buddhist and I and I do, you know, really enjoy and understand non-dual transcendent states of mind and things like that. And um, and so I wanted those people also to feel and free to come and sit with me and learn how to do things and not scare them away with any kind of woo woo or magical thinking or anything, you know, that I wanted them to know that this is really grounded in, in real practice. And I, and I love the neuroscience behind mindfulness and meditation. Yes. So I do I like the science part um, of it too. Yeah. I unpack that for people and I've actually done more kind of research and study into it because I am teaching this more often and um, and really digging all the amazing approaches, uh, with the brain science, you know, in that part. But I, but I love also the subjective part and how it, how it does change your, your, your inner life and, and your way of walking through the world. Well, and especially the, uh, you know, it's very, it's interesting to me because the more we find out about the science of the mind and how powerful our thoughts are, uh, I, I, I find, and it's not, I'm not going to go the conspiracy route here, but w- what it is is that when I, in my own world, my own life, when I um, see examples of how powerful my thoughts are, be it my health, like if I'm starting to feel a little something, and instead of getting scared and instead of um, uh, being angry at my body, uh, you know, I, I change my thinking on that. I accept it. I say, oh, you know, you little bump, you don't really need to be here. I, you can stay if you want, but you're not really required at this point in my life. Um, but when, as we're getting more and more in touch with that and the science behind how, you know, even with the whole placebo effect, right? Mm-hmm. The, the, yeah. the, the, the power of the, the, the magical, the guy with the white coat and the stethoscope, and he says, you're going to die in three days. Uh, and if you believe him, you you know, your body shuts down. You're gone. To, you're yeah. toast. Even if you're yeah. a completely healthy individual by all, you know, means. But as we're getting to this point, Kelly, and I want to discuss this with you in, in, in some depth. As we're getting to this point where we're really discovering the power that we have as human beings, not only to affect our own health and happiness and well-being and what we bring to us, right? Because energy, all that energy mm. attracts that energy. But as mm-hmm. we're doing that, isn't it interesting now that you're back in the, now that you're back plugged in to the matrix, isn't it interesting how they're I, I mean, the, it just seems like so much is trying to get our attention or maybe it's always been that way. But I really feel like it's it's kind of like on overdrive right now. And 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 we're just kind of sitting here on the sidelines going, oh, that's cute. You know, <laughs> you're not going to scare me now, but that's cute. Um, can you talk about, because again, I mean, you're, you're plugged back in, right? You're, you're on the Facebooks. Yes. I, I'm actually leaving the Facebooks. Again? Um, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to shut down my private account because I have some major issues with them, but, um, but yes, I'm back on Twitter and Twitter's my real home and, um, and, but I'm up on social media. Yeah. And, and I'm up there and then I take my own breaks. Like you were saying, like I'll unplug for two days or a week or whatever it is. Um, 
but yeah, I'm, I'm plugged in. I'm, I'm in, I'm in on it, you know, and, um, but I tend to try, I, I really see like the only way I can be there is to try to raise the vibration of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. and I refuse to get in to those, you know, those kind of slugging fights with people. And I don't know if it's the algorithm has changed a little bit, or, I mean, people are still at it and there's still a lot of trolls and everything, but it feels like it's kind of calmed down a little bit the last few months. But I just, I don't try to, I don't do the whole partisan politics thing. No. I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I will retweet a couple of things that I think are pertinent, but I'm trying to have a bigger conversation. I'm trying to get beneath or above this kind of, I don't know, mundane kind of mudslinging that the world wants us to be in, you know, this divisiveness where we don't really see each other as humans anymore. Yeah. I'm really not interested in that conversation because it's, it's not going to get us anywhere. And, um, so yeah, I, and the thing is too, is like, I think if you've been paying attention for the last, certainly 15, 16, 17, even, well, since the millennial change, let's say since the year 2000, I mean, those of us who've kind of been in this world, whether we're like, you know, in the spiritual world or the, the healing world or the psychology world, um, I think we've all seen that this, this was all coming. I mean, we've all felt it. We've all, we all kept saying, you know, there's a big change coming. Like first it was like the millennial, like we all thought the big thing was going to happen in 2000. And oh, we, then, we were all, we were all freaking it, out that our computers were going right, to freeze. And airplanes were going to fly out of the yeah. sky and shit like that. Yeah. Um, and then there was the big, was it 2012? That was the yes. big one. Yeah. That yeah. was, so that was, was the that one. Armageddon. We were all, or whatever it was. Yeah. The end of the world was 2012. Supposedly. The end of the world, right. Was there some sort of big shift was coming and some kind of, was it a central American or Mexican mythology or Quetzal- something Quetzal- like that? Quetzal- and, Quetzal- yes. Quetzal- Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> so we've all, we all feel it, you know, we're, I mean, you know, and there's all these end of the world cults and all this. So there's, there's the end of something is happening. We yeah. can feel it. Yeah. And, um, and now with, um, the, the gentleman who's in the white house, I mean, it's, 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 it's like, you can't write a movie about this because everyone would say it's too ridiculous. It's too on the nose. It's, it's just amazing. And so it is the end of the world in some ways. And, um, and the thing that's really exciting though about it is that, um, without this particular turn of events, I think, um, mm-hmm. we would have been very complacent mm, and, yes. um, sitting on our resting on our laurels. I mean, you know, obviously political parties right now are all in disarray on both sides of the aisle in, in every way. But, um, but, you know, I don't think we'd all be waking up quite the way we are right now if it wasn't for this gentleman in the white house. And, and I really think that, and the, the thing we were talking about earlier about women, you know, really mm-hmm. stepping forward in leadership positions. Um, yeah, women have had it. <laughs> we have yeah. Definitely. We're done. We're like, okay, we've left this in your guys hands for, you know, what the last 4,000 years, you guys have had a good shot at this and, uh, you need to, um, either a start really sharing power or b just kind of move over for a little while and let us take the reins and figure out a different way to do this. And, um, and I think that's partly why I was emboldened to start teaching this stuff too, because I don't really see myself as a meditation teacher or a, a wisdom teacher. Like I, I don't know how to, I don't even know what stupid word to call me at this point, but this is what I do know is that I really believe that there is a different way to operate in the world and that it has to come from this deep sense of soul and self and that, and that the, the, and that our mission and that our kind of our motivation needs to come from a different place besides 
ego and success and materialism. Well, yeah, that's the only way. That's the only way that it that it can uh, can come out and 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 change anything. And and I and I think you you nailed it. You nailed it on the head when you taught when you said that the person that's in the White House. And I love how we're not evoking the name because that's just yeah, fantastic. I, won't, I, won't I know say it. me either. Yeah. Um, but I think what it is is that we needed to see the worst of ourselves. And yes, I'm saying, and I'm saying yes. collectively, I'm not saying that, you know, Susie Q sitting in her kitchen right now is all of these things, but we needed to see a representation of all of the things. And it, and it brought up to me when, when we kind of evoked this person and not his name, but we've, you know, talked about this person. It reminded me of, and I'm not religious at all, folks, but it reminded me of the seven deadly sins and, mm-hmm. and which are pride, which this person exudes, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, greed, mm-hmm. lust, mm-hmm. envy, mm. gluttony, wrath, and sloth. And I'm still not certain what sloth is. Maybe you can help me out on that. But but basically, all of those things are wrapped up into this. I mean, you. Know, it's like this is something that is a mirror for us as a society, also to see and go, ooh. That is just icky. I don't want to be a part of that. And sometimes yeah. we do. We need to see what we are not or experience what we are not in order to know what, who we are as a human species. Yeah. And, and I think part of that is, is not in rejecting it because I'm a, a, a big believer in owning our shadow selves and looking mm, at mm-hmm. all of our shadow selves squarely in the eye to really get to know all of it. And I love that list. I've never thought about it in that framework of the seven deadly sins. It's a fascinating because, you know, what are the seven deadly sins? You know, they're, they're very much also the things that, you know, taught in Buddhism, you know, about the, the things that can pull you away from, you know, the, the, the right path, you know, and, um, so these are human traits that that kind of make us move away from the the mark, you know, get us off of our true north. And if they are fed too much, they lead to a, a very unhappy existence. Um, you know, they may feel good in pursuing them in the moment, but in the long run, they don't work for us. And they don't work when we have to live together. You know, part of it it's is the reason that right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Part of the reason that list is there is because it's to remind us. Oh, in order for us to live as community, we kind of need to check our check some of the stuff at the door. We just can't run. We can't let our id run rampant, and that is yeah. very much what we are seeing. It's the ego. Yeah, it is. It it it, it is. It is the ego, and it is also some part of it is pure id, and um, so, so yeah, it. And it's really important that we see the price of what, you know, part part of unconscious capitalism and unconscious technological progress and unconscious um, oppression looks like. I mean, not that there's conscious oppression, but but like unconscious ways of being with each other, that what it looks like and um and I think for women, the reason it's hit us so hard is because, you know, there's the racism is there and the greed is there. I mean, all that stuff is there. But as women, when we when he was elected and came to office, we thought, wow, we like we really get no respect like 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 that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, really? Like, like we get to have a pussy grabber, you know, like (laughs) (laughs) what? Like, I think it was just so stunning. And, um, so, yeah, well, it, it, it it reinforced, it reinforced what, what society has placed a value on and that, and you can go back from the days of dynasty or Dallas or television telling you it's all about the money. And, and, and they were some really despicable people on those shows, you know, that had a (laughs) lot of money, but what the, the message is, if you have enough money, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. 
And it doesn't matter. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're now, if you're a man, it's expected of you. Now, if you're a woman and you have a lot of money and you do whatever the fuck you want, you will be persecuted just because you're the, the fact that you're a woman and maybe your your age. Well, she's a you know, she's a hag. She's old. She's heavy. Yeah. It's always based on how you look. This creature <laughs> that embodies the seven deadly <laughs> sins of gluttony. <laughs> God, everything. I mean, I'm just waiting for his like, you know, for like his head to spin or something to come out of his stomach and people just to sit there and go, you know, make America great again. You know, come on yeah. now. And, yeah. And, and and I think it's just it's a really good opportunity for us to. To see what these aspects are in ourselves to really clean our own houses up, clean and up the to, caca to own our own inner greed and our own inner pride and, and to really check into all those things because, um, you know, it's, you know, you, you can't, you can't know what you're dealing with until you really know your, your insides too. And so I, I just, I feel it's so important and that's why demonizing, people i'm really not interested it doesn't in that. work like no no and 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 you'll see that on the you know you'll see that on the left in the quote unquote i'm throwing air quotes up progressive left you'll see yeah. they they there's a there's a uh, there's a, a a joy and 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 again it's still because i'm i'm energy sensitive okay so i can mm -hmm. feel somebody's energy i can feel your energy if if you're it's the it's the idea of like if somebody comes across someone and they go oh well uh, they were hurting somebody, and so I beat the crap to. Uh, I beat them, you know, up to the point where they were almost dead. Okay, well, yes, it's it's good that you stop them from hurting someone, but then you took out your anger, your inner anger, and you think it's justified, and that's yeah. what I see on the progressive left. There is a uh, 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 there is an anger. There is, um, you know, of course, there is, you know, the blame game, but but it's like, well. You know, first of all, and oh, I'm just so tired of people talking about it, too. It's like, what are you doing in your life? What are you doing in your community, in your life, in your world to change things uh, for the better um, instead of, you know, pointing the finger at, at this particular person? But it, it just seems to be it's that game. It's that old black and white game, I think. Yes, it is. It is the old black and white game. And that's when that's. That's the conversation right there. You know, life is multiple shades of gray. And yes, there are people who have behaviors that we would absolutely consider evil and horrible. And we meet, we must do everything to stop that behavior. But inside, you know, what leads people to think that way? What leads people to do that, to do that, to hate so much, to, to be so fearful of the other um, whether you're on the left or the right and, um, and being able to see the humanity inside of people, um, you know, one thing, whether it was true or not, you know, during the campaign, they talked a lot about this, uh, traditional white male, uh, economic anxiety. And I, I meditated a lot on the traditional white male and really found a big, big pool of empathy for, you know, this person who's 40 something or 50 something or 60 something who, whose, you know, kind of reign of power over the millennia is starting to tip, not starting to, has tipped for a while in general, you know, patriarchy and, and all that that was built on in some sort of, you know, whatever abstract way that is, but in the real life, and then this American dream that they had bought into and been sold for um, the last 150 years in this country and the power they always assumed they had. And then here for the last 50 years have people of color and women and, and the whole, you know, LB, you know, LBGQT movement and all of that um, has taken over the culture and the conversation. And these people, um, some of them have felt silenced and invisible and powerless. And what really opened my heart was the reality, which I wish we could figure out a way to do this, to understand that 
those of us who are women or people of color or, or gay or in whatever way have, have felt um, disenfran- disenfranchised in this country for so long, we understand what it feels like to be silenced and invisible and feel like we have no power. And so we should be able to have a lot of empathy, actually, for this particular group of the population that feels like it's losing it. Um, And they should be able to now relate to us because now they know what it's felt like all this time. And we can actually meet each other there um, because that's the common human experience going on, which is what is it like to not have power, to feel invisible, to not feel like you have a say. Um, And I think that is a place that we could have a conversation in this country um, and find some common ground. I think, I think that is, that is very doable. The, The thing that pops up for me, and it doesn't matter which, where you're at on the spectrum is the ego. Um, if we're able mm-hmm. to, if we're able to recognize, I mean, we all have ego. We all are, we all are narcissists in some realm, not, you know, on the spectrum of, of, you know, not, don't have to be an elite yeah. narcissist, but we all have these narcissistic tendencies or, or, you know, the ego will step in and say, you know, uh, it'll just protect it. It's protecting itself. It, 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 it yeah, needs 100%. to survive, right? It needs to survive. Yep, that's its job. So yeah. if we're able to step back from that ego and go, well, wait, 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 you know, what I just said or what I wanted to say, that was just my ego getting in the way. And it doesn't matter if it's um, communicating or ex- expressing this from people who have nothing to do with you in your, you know, your life yeah. or in a relationship, you know, also. Mm-hmm. It's how yeah. we it's how we communicate it. Number one, it's how we communicate with ourselves, which I think we are starting to come back to, thankfully. But um, mm-hmm. for so long, it's been the outside world. It's how we communicate with the outside world. And that's why um, I, I well and I, I love like like I said, I love what you're doing with the webinar Unplug with Kelly Carlin. I love that because you're giving a space to people, even if it's just once a week to to come back and listen to that, those inner voices to, to, to take a break from having to communicate with the outside world all the time. And, and yet you're communicating with other, you know, these other people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it is, it's about giving people a chance to, to find who like within themselves, what are the voices that because they've been too busy or they're too inundated with, messages from the world or just too indented inundated in all the roles they play Mm -hmm. in life. You know, you talk to an, an average mom and she's wearing 22 hats. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) And the, one of the first things I try to get people to understand is that you have to put your oxygen mask on first in order to help other people. Love that. Yeah. And, yes. And I just love that metaphor. And that's like, you know, self-care. It's self-care 101. It's, you know, and to get people to recognize the voices that are pulling them in all these directions. You know, like, what are the, what are these little demands going on inside of you? And, and, get, and, and identifying these voices and really seeing if they're legit or not, or are they full of shit, you know, because that's the first line of discovering if you're living in choice or not, you know, but besides attention, like where is your attention going? The other most important thing in our lives is, are we in choice? What places are we just unconsciously doing things and following blind habits within ourselves, or are we being pulled by collective needs, community needs, family needs, societal needs? You know, are we? How much in choice are we in our life? And so I, I like to slow things down for people enough so that they start to get to see where they are and where they're not in choice, so that when they when they do have to be, you know, do something or they are obligated to something to at least to have consciousness around it and to bring some choice to the experience, you know, whether it be their attitude, their thoughts, their mood, whatever it is. 
And that is the key. Isn't that the Zen key of life when you're triggered? Because we all get mm-hmm. triggered. Uh, oh, yeah. We get triggered for whatever reason. Somebody honks at you on the free, you know, they cut you <laughs> off on the freeway. Uh, that Your partner says something or somebody says something to you about your whatever and you get triggered, right? And you go – and what happens is, again, the, the ego or the fear comes out. And um, the the heart wall. I, I love this this idea of a heart wall. The heart wall comes up. It's like, mm. um, you know, Fort Knox. It comes up, and the heart wall yep. comes up, and then the words come out, or they they can come out if you're triggered because you're you know you've been hurt before. Uh, maybe as a child you were hurt in a past relationship. Somebody shattered your heart because they fooled on you, or fooled around on you, or whatever. Yeah. But how good does it feel, Kelly? And I, I swear, I want to get like a gold star, you know, sticker set or something. But how good <laughs> does it feel when you get triggered, and the voices that are full of shit start coming at you, and they come hard, and they're so convincing. And how good does it feel when you're able to walk yourself away off the cliff? Yeah. That before is you lose your shit. Yeah. That is, you know, when you start to get that skill level oh, with yourself, it, it is. It's an incredible feeling because you realize, wow. You're not always uh, driving the car. Yeah. You're not always <laughs> driving the car. Sometimes, sometimes somebody jacks and, you. And there, <laughs> Yeah. And there's this wonderful moment when you get enough distance from it and you can feel mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you become the witness of it all. And you're like, oh, look at the energy streaming through my body right now. And I'm choosing not to say anything this time. Like before I would just blurt it out. Yeah. And, and then I would have to go clean it up afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> but this time I'm not blurting it out. But boy, I'm just watching there's a lot of heat in my body right now. And I'm going to go take a walk around the block instead and check in with myself and figure out what's who's who inside is really afraid right now, or, you know, is Mm. feeling that triggered part, you know, and, and let's give her some, some love and some attention and let's let her know that, um, a, She's no longer six. She's now 46 and that she's not in any danger and that she actually is loved now and that there's all these other good things happening in her life. And you're just you're rewiring yourself in the moment. And um, that's oh, yeah, that's the gold, man. And you do. You should have a gold star in that. Moment. I, I do. I want to stick it on my forehead. I, I do. <laughs> and it, and you can relate it to all different kinds of things. It doesn't have to just be when you're triggered and you're going to lose your shit with your you know significant other or or, or you know, a coworker or whatever. It can be as simple as just like changing, you know, saying, you know what? My body really I, my body. I bet you if I drink this big, huge bottle of um uh you know alkaline water with lemon i bet you my body's body's going to really like that a lot more than that coffee or that soda or and, that diet coke yeah or that totally. diet coke absolutely and it's being yeah. conscious of your every single thought and action and it sounds exhausting but it's not because after a while you get kind of on autopilot with that instead of being triggered by everything you kind of go you know what that's not the best road for me you know, it's it. I could sit there and bleh, and spew crap out all over the place and feel bad about it, or I can step back. Like I said, pull yourself away from the cliff before you go over, and pull yourself back. And 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 what I do is I do a check. I do this thing where I, you know, because okay, let's put it this way: whenever whatever it is that you're triggered on, okay, let's just in your mind, just listeners in your mind, just think about something that triggers you, okay? Something that triggers you, and. In your mind, you go to the absolute worst. I mean, you're like a, the best screenwriter in the world, right? You go, oh, to the, God, yeah. you go to the, you know, she must be sleeping with everybody in town, <laughs> dude. She, you know, I wonder if they fucked last night because I didn't get to talk to her or him or whatever, right? You, you do this. You do this. Everybody does it. So don't pretend that you don't. But so, but with this is that when those things start happening, what I've done is too is, and it's funny is to, if you can step back just for a second, feel it, r- r- look at it, and go, "Oh, I see you, you bastard! I see what you're doing." Okay, I got, this is cute. This is funny. This is hilarious. Step back, and and then just say, "Let's just let this play out." 
okay, let's just let this play out. And when you don't put that energy out, because that's the other thing, because energy is energy, right? You start lashing out. You start t- cold, the cold treatment to your partner, the silent yeah. treatment. What's wrong, baby? Oh, no, nothing. You know, the, the one words, fine. Right. I'm fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're not fine. You just imagine me sleeping with the whole football team. You're not fine. <laughs> but when you're able, when you just go, you know what? I'm just going to chill for a bit and just feel the energy of this person or the situation, whatever it is. And when you do that and then you go, oh, there was nothing. Oh, my God. They love me. You know? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And and they're none the wiser that you had this weird, weird mental breakdown in your head. <laughs> that you had a mini series going on in your head and uh exactly yeah totally yeah it, yeah you know and it's the thing too is like you know and some days we're you know we're not the best at this we don't take care of ourselves and we don't stop you know the the movie fast enough and all that kind of stuff and the thing i've really found that has helped me is to learn to really love myself in that moment you know when i Yes. Every, yeah. every Sunday, <laughs> yes. what I, we start the webinar, we do 20 minutes of sitting meditation together and I, and I lead people through it. And, and there's a little silence, there's silence in it. We do some basic Vipassana meditation, which is really following our breath. But I do remind people and it's of something really important that my very first meditation teacher taught me. And I think this is, this kind of applies to all of this kind of stuff that, so when you're meditating or I get people all the time saying, oh, I I can't meditate. I can't shut my mind off. And I say to people, well, A, you're not supposed to shut your mind off because that's your mind's job is to always be thinking things because that's its whole purpose is to keep you survived. So it wants to be scanning the horizon all the time. But, um, but, you know, we are practicing refocusing our thoughts or refocusing our attention. I'm sorry. And so sometimes we're focusing on our breath and usually with beginner practitioners or in days when I'm not doing very well, um, it takes about four or five breaths and then we're off. Our mind is off somewhere and we're doing the to-do list, or I like to say we're at Disneyland suddenly and we're off somewhere. And then you're off, you know, you're on Disneyland and you're on the Pirates of Caribbean. And then all of a sudden you go, Oh shit, I'm supposed to be meditating. Mm -hmm. And then our normal reaction in that moment is, Oh, Kelly, you're such a piece of shit. You don't know how to meditate. You've been meditating for 20 years. Why can't you even get like 10 breaths in without you, without like, you know, going off to Disneyland somewhere. And what's interesting is in that moment, really what the practice is about is not so much having this perfect mind where you follow your breath the whole time. The whole practice is in that moment when you discover that you have gone off on a tangent and lost your way to say to yourself, oh, as if you would say to a little toddler who's learning how to walk, you say, oh, you know what? It's okay, darling. You went off on a little tangent, but let's get back to the breath now and let's try again. Let's begin again. And you do it with a huge amount of compassion and love and care. And it is in that practice over weeks and months and years, but really, even if it's just a few weeks, people feel the, um, the benefit of it self-love becomes a reality in your life because you are loving yourself in that moment and you are taking, actually making an action of self-love and learning how to strengthen that muscle. And so that's what I love about this practice is that then in all parts of your life, after you've had three vodka drinks with your girlfriends on a Friday night and you think to yourself, Oh my God, I wasn't going to do that. Let's, you know, I mean, obviously we're going to have some consequences here because we're going to have a hangover in the morning, but I don't have to pick up the big stick and beat myself up about this too. So, so yeah. So, so what happens is, um, that, you know, there, there are these times when we become unconscious again, whether it's during the meditation where our mind goes off and we're at Disneyland again, or in our life, you know, when we, you know, we eat the fifth Milano <laughs> double chocolate, you know, mm-hmm. not that I would ever do that. Uh, <laughs> but, um, or we, or we snap at our loved one, you know, whatever it is, but it is that moment where 
instead of picking up the biggest stick we can find and, and beating mm-hmm. ourselves up for it, it's this, it, we have this moment to bring compassion to ourselves, to that part of us that leads us, you know, down the, the path uh, that, that the ego will do. And to give ourselves permission to begin again. Um, and, and it's not about making excuses for yourself or letting yourself off the hook, because I think like our Puritan mindset in America, we tend to think like, you know, we have to be really harsh and firm with ourselves to change ourselves. But self-love, creating an atmosphere where you can really love yourself through it, for me, has been one of the most powerful things I've done in my life for myself. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, uh, well, that's so much of it is the key because if you do have a situation where you lose your shit, um, and, and you can, you know, you can seek an apology from the person if, you know, the situation that you lost your shit on. And what happens is that it's more, you're right. We get more, uh, upset at ourselves, so so it's a double whammy. You're upset for hurting somebody or saying something, you know, bringing the big stick to the to the fight. And you're upset at hurting them. Right. And so yeah. that's a set of emotions. But then there is this guilt or uh, this feeling of like, oh, I was so stupid to do that. So you beat yourself up. Yeah. Which cre- it's, it's it's again, it's more energy and it's and it's a and it's a negative energy. And you're and you're right. If you have I don't have children myself, I, my my own children, but um, having a, a child, I would imagine, too, that you love that child no matter what they do. Exactly. Right. Yes. If they whinge or if they throw a tantrum in the middle of the mall you know, you're not going to stop loving them. You're, you know, you right. can understand them and try and say, oh, honey, it's okay. Don't worry. Everybody does, you know, everybody does that. But isn't that interesting? We can do that to, for our children, but it's hard, yes. it's hard sometimes for us to do that to ourselves. Yeah. And, and, you know, and also taking responsibility, you know, if, if there's something in our life that we really can't, um, get through or can't stop being triggered by or, you know, Mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. you know, like, like taking responsibility for that. Like, like if you need to go to a meeting because you drink too much, you need to go to a meeting. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. So there's a, so it's a really, it's an, it's an interesting adulting that happens in this and, and self love is an extremely mature adulting, thing to do um it's a balancing act isn't it and it's not yeah. and it's not writing off that you know oh you know you're right it's having that delicate balance of of um first of all understanding what your actions do to other people and yes. and then not being so hard on yourself but also not being flippant and you know and and just doing it all the time because then because then you come on now you're pushing it right well right because then it is it, then it is your ego. Then you're yeah. just you're just being you're just kind of an out of control you're child. An ass. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're just an ass. <laughs> and you're suffering for it. I mean, you're this is su- the whole thing. Yes. The whole yes. thing is, you know, Buddhist practice and philosophy is about easing suffering. And easing suffering doesn't mean avoiding suffering or doesn't mean not facing the difficult things. I mean, if anything, it means being able to sit with them, all of it with an enormous heart, you know, like you talked earlier about the heart wall, it's about letting your heart wall down and sitting with the suffering that causes this behavior in the first place. You know, the, the broken parts of ourselves, um, the, the way we're hardwired um, to have some compassion and empathy for that. You know, when the mind wanders during meditation, the mind isn't doing anything but its job. Right. And and it's about understanding that it's like, oh, there goes my mind again. It's just doing what it thinks it needs to do right now. And I'm just going to come back to the breath. And so it's about learning to have a new relationship with the mind. Mm. A new relationship with the mind. I I, I think that that's um, 
that's again something that people are going to be coming back to more and more as they unplug. <laughs> you can, yeah. right because when you're plugged in, you're um you're you're sort of drawn here and there, you kind of led like a horse, you know, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> you yes. know. Oh my god, there's a great recipe for, you know, whatever. Shiny thing, shiny, shiny thing, yeah, shiny exactly. thing, shiny thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like, what is it that yeah. Dory in that movie in, in Finding Nemo? It's like, "Oh, pretty thing." Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or this or the uh in Up, you know, the dog squirrel. Yes. You know, it, it is that. And that is our animal minds that's we're wired that way and thank god because that kept us safe and it got us yes as a species to where we are today um but it's about once again it's about being in choice around that and uh and you know i was a person who had serious panic attack disorder for many years and i do i do dance with depression in my life and so for me to learn to have a new relationship with my mind, one that I did not trust because it was, it seemed to be overwhelming me a lot with anxiety and panic and fear and terror and to learn how to watch it and witness it mm. and to become separate from it and see its little tricks and what it wants to do and how it's thinking there's a tiger in the room that wants to kill me. And yet being able to look around and going, okay, Kelly, uh, are you safe right now? Is there a tiger here? No, there is not. And yeah. learning to be the grown up inside my inner life. I love how well, it, I, I can't, I, I didn't write down what exactly what you just said, but the idea of sitting back and watching your mind, is that a little bit about yeah. what you were saying? I, 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 I like that. And it's a concept that uh, I think, um, it's a concept that's for some folks it's a it's a little hard to dif- it's a little difficult to uh to grasp but when you do grasp it it is a life changer it 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 is it's a total life changer and and it's and that's why i think i love teaching this stuff because i love having people who have never dipped their toe into this stuff before but are really curious about it and want to want to know about it and to really show them how simple it is to start to learn how to witness it all. And that people think, oh, well, then I'm going to become like detached, overly detached, and I'm going to be like this boring person and have no emotions. And Mm -mm. that's just not truth at Mm -mm. all. I mean, it doesn't work that way. But what it does do is it just helps you like, be able to kind of watch it all like a movie. So the, the, everything then becomes that way. You, st- you know, my mother, God, when I was growing up, I was one of those very moody, serious girls. <laughs> you do? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, totally. And um, I, if anyone there is into the Enneagram, I'm a four on the Enneagram. I'm like Persephone, <laughs> you know, I am. And um, my mother used to say to me, you know, you just learn to need to laugh at yourself. And I just thought that was the most horrific, horrible thing. Like, I know I have to feel my pain so deeply, mom, you don't understand. And even into my 20s, you know, and then into my 30s. And I have to tell you, she was right. God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) They always are. <laughs> the more distance you get from this frolicking ego, and then you you can you can watch the frolicking ego out in the world too, and all of the craziness that goes on in the world right now. You can watch it all as if it is a picture show in some way, and you can laugh at yourself, and you can laugh at it, and that doesn't mean you don't fight for the right things, and you don't vote and you don't participate, but you don't feel like it's an anchor around your neck taking you down all the time. Exactly. And, and you have the ability to, when you're able to do that, you, you have the ability as, uh, for empathy, yes. n- not only for, uh, for yourself, but others. And isn't that like something that is, uh, absolutely required in this world at this moment. Oh, right? oh boy. You know, if, if we could give everyone empathy pills, um, yeah, so much would be solved. Yes. 
<laughs> I agree. Well, because we're, we are, e- even though we don't pay that much attention to, um, we really, we don't step outside of our mind and, and look at how we're analyzing things or reacting to things. We are so much in our mi- <laughs> in our mind and, um, and, and our judgments on, on things, our judgments on other people, our judgments on, yeah. you know, we like to judge. We're judgy. Um, we're judgy little people sometimes. <laughs> But when, it's how yeah. it once again we're hardwired for it. It keeps it's kept us alive. Survival. That's it. Don't go outside the cave yet, because the dinosaur's going to eat you, Kelly. It's right. It's right. And you got to figure out friend or foe right away. You know, and you got to and you you got to put people into categories because you can't. You know, there's too much to take to think about otherwise. You know, I mean, it's just you know. So we're fighting against some real evolutionary kind of built in hardware and but civilization has just you know tromped forward and so we're we're not quite hardwired well for the times we live in and so we're we're fighting against that all the time for sure well and we're 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 we are evolving though the beautiful thing is is like i said and we started to say earlier in the, in the show um i think that there are you know legions of people waking up and really who are taking the call and heeding the call and stepping up and being the leaders and just saying you know what damn it i'm going to i'm do, i'm going to do it um yeah. our, our amazing women and i just wanted to um we only have like a minute left here so i wanted to let people know that uh, one of those amazing women who are really um, changing the world one little bit at a time is Kelly Carlin. And Kelly, your webinar is uh, Unplug with Kelly Carlin. This starts April 1st. And for people who want to sign up, where do they go? Come to my website, kellycarlin.com. Click on the teaching tab and you'll see uh, everything about the class. And there's a register button there that will lead you to Rizuku which is the portal to sign up for the class. And um, you can find out everything else about what I'm doing on there. I'm going to be teaching around the country a little bit this year also. And uh, and you can always find me on Twitter at Kelly underscore Carlin. Follow me there. That's where I hang out. Um, and uh, yeah, but uh, come check it out. And will you come back on Out of the Box Radio when you have some other good things to share with us? I would love to. This has been lovely fun. That would be awesome. And I would be, uh, and I don't want to, I hate putting you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, one of the things that I read about was that when you were young, because I, I used to do impressions too. Uh, I used to do John Travolta. Um, when you were when you were young, you uh, you did a, a, a pretty damn good Ethel Merman. Can you still? There's no business like show business like no business I know. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you so much. I want to thank Kelly Carlin. She's been my guest this hour. You can find out more by going to kellycarlin.com. Check out her website and, and check out the webinar she's doing and the damn fine Ethel Merman impersonator. Um, I want to thank you listeners for t- for tuning in this hour. Remember, uh, if you ever, never, ever want to miss an episode, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio, YouTube, wherever. And until next week, remember to always think outside of the box. Bye for now. <laughs>